Hello everybody. We will try in this video to clarify together the anatomy of the middle turbinate, which has actually a quite complex architecture. Its understanding is mandatory to master the nasal endoscopic anatomy, but also to achieve first steps in endoscopic surgery. I used two main references to make this video. You will find the links at the bottom of the page. We start by drawing kind of template like this. We cut firstly at the broken line that way, then fold the paper on the continuous line. We have then a first glimpse of our middle turbinate with its three portions, the sagittal number one, coronal number two, and axial number three. It remains for us to locate the middle turbinate into the nasal cavity precisely into the ethmoidal complex. Imagine now you are entering the right nasal cavity. You will face the second portion of the turbinate, the first one at your right. Here is the nasal septum. In blue you have the lamina papyracea. The spheric green structure is the ethmoid bulla, and in front of it you have the encinate process. The first portion is the sagittal one, or more exactly, parasagittal. So, if we take a look from medial to lateral, we'll get this view. So, the third portion is directly visible on rhinoscopy. It has an interior and inferior mucus free edge. It has also several anatomic variation as pneumatization, so that's what we call concabilosa, inversion, or it can be a bifi turbinate. It attached at the top on the school base at the level of the lateral lamella of the cribriform plate. The second portion of the middle turbinate runs on a coronal plane. It represents the posterior boundary of the interior ethmoidal complex and separates it from the posterior ethmoid. So when you go through it, from front to back, you find yourself on the posterior ethmoid. It attaches to the school base on the top and to the lamina papyracea laterally. This second portion is also called the vertical basal lamella, which is a very, very important landmark in ethmoidal surgery. The third portion runs on an axial plane and forms the horizontal basal lamella, which is the floor of the posterior ethmoid. It attaches laterally to the lateral nasal wall to the crista ethmoidalis of the palatine bone which is an important landmark in the surgery of uh, the pterygopalatine fossa or uh, in the surgery uh, of bleeding if you want uh, to uh, clip or uh, to ligate the sphenopalatine artery because the um, sphenopalatine foramen comes just behind the crista ethmoidalis. Here an example on cadaveric dissection of the sphenopalatine foramen and the crista ethmoidalis. So to summarize, we have our first portion, which is the medial boundary of the ethmoidal complex, the interior one, formed with the bulla, the encinate process, the agar nasi cell, the siatosoma uh, lunaris and infundibulum, and also frontal recess. The second portion, which is the vertical basal lamella, separates the anterior and the posterior ethmoids. The third portion, which is the horizontal part of the basal lamella, is the floor of the posterior ethmoid complex. 
So, which is the medial boundary of the posterior ethmoid complex is the superior turbinate. The superior turbinate is a very important landmark in the surgery of the posterior ethmoid. Sometimes we are a little bit lost. We don't know if we, we are yet on the posterior ethmoid or not. So if we go medially and we find the superior turbinate, that means we are on the right place. The posterior limit of the posterior ethmoidal complex is the interior face of the sphenoid. The ostium of the sphenoid comes always medial to the superior turbinate. I hope it was useful. Thank you for watching. See you on next videos.